it has uh, been a hot minute. Hi, and welcome to Acorn Knits. My name's Natalia. I'm knitter based in Sydney, Australia, and I'm also terrible at uploading videos in any kind of consistent manner whatsoever. <laughs> so for any returning viewers, I really apologize for just the inconsistency and the delay with some things. June's just a really hectic month. It's just like one birthday after the other. We've had things every weekend going on and it's just been really crazy. In addition to that, uh, my mom's come down to visit. I haven't seen her in forever um, just because of COVID. I think it's almost been two years since I've seen her. So also, you know, wanting to spend time with her and um, just like make plans for while she's down here. Uh, she's also a very busy person, so she's like tried to jam pack everything into her trip down. Um, so just trying to, you know, in a little way help with that. But then also I've been doing some contract work for a not-for-profit and that's been taking up a lot of my time recently. It's only going to be a short contract, um, but that's, like I mentioned, it's just been taking up more of my time than I expected or um, anticipated. So anyway, thank you for bearing with me. So because there's been a bit of a gap between the videos, I've got quite a bit to catch you up on in regards to progress, like works. Wow, I can't speak at all. <laughs> it's been a few weeks and I can't speak to a camera whatsoever. I actually tried to record this video last weekend and I was reviewing the footage and I was trying to edit it as best I could, but it was just, I was just so rusty and so stumped on words and I just didn't know what to say. I probably could have a clip in just to give you an idea of what it was like. Um, just because I have been doing some, just between some stuff. But yeah, it was just, I don't know, it wasn't terrible, but I just thought if you haven't, if we haven't chatted to each other in a few weeks, I don't want that to be the first thing that we kind of pick back up on. So hopefully this episode's gonna be a little bit more natural and just better all around. But because there's quite a bit to catch up on, I'm gonna split it up. So I'm gonna do an episode this week just on the progress of projects. Why do I keep stuffing that up? The prog the projects that I've been working on. That's all I wanna say. <laughs> um, so this week I'm just gonna talk about that, like whips and I maybe have a finished object. Or I do, I just do. That and then I'll do um, an episode next week that's just talking about all the new acquisitions that I've had um, since we last spoke. So I think with all that out of the way, I do have a cup of coffee with me. So I think that was maybe the error I made with the previous episode that I filmed that I'm not airing. I don't think I was sufficiently caffeinated. So hopefully with this, I shall be. Um, but with that out of the way, let's get started. So the moment has come that we've all been waiting for. We've been chatting about this project for the last few months. It's I was going to do some major introduction into this finished object about how we've been spending months with each other talking about it and there's been ups and downs and peaks and troughs and blah 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 but I think I'll just let the object talk for itself. I have finished my Moody Fairy Shawl. I think because I've had it scrunched up on my needles for so long I really didn't realize how big this thing is. This thing is huge. It is ginormous. Oh my god and I'm so happy with it. So <laughs> we'll talk aside about how massive it is. I'm so happy with how it turned out. There's something about seeing it off the needles that its glory is kind of fully being realized. I haven't even blocked it yet. Um, I have woven in all the ends. So let me do a little show. I'll probably put in some B-roll of me trying this on um, afterwards so you can get a better look of it. And I'll also show you the scale of this thing because it's huge as I've mentioned, if you weren't listening. But there's something as well about the shape of it. Maybe it's also the color. I think it's a mix of the colors and the shape and the textures that it kind of reminds me of, um, oh, I'll put a photo of it, of like um, some of the things you'd see in ancient Egypt of like the jewelry that they would wear around their necks or some of the like wings that the people would have. I don't know, there's something kind of Egyptian about it. I think it's the shape. I guess you always think of that lapis lazuli as very kind of classically ancient Egyptian and you sort of get that with that blue. So I'll just show you what I did. So this is what I did for the border. Go. So pretty simple. I've got some elongated stitches just here, as you can see, and then an I-cord ribbing or I-cord bind off. And 
I was playing a serious game of yarn chicken. I think once again, because it was scrunched up on my needles, I didn't realize how big the wingspan was. Stitch wise count, I think it's at about 700, but I thought, oh, I'll have enough of the white left to finish the I-cord border. And I spent literally almost all of yesterday just knitting the, the I-cord bind off border. I never would have thought it would have taken me that long. I haven't done I-cord in so long. I forgot actually how long it does take. And obviously I did breaks in between. I didn't literally just sit there all day knitting, but I'd say a good six hours kind of not knitting, like kind of knitting on and off, it took me to, to do this. And I made it all the way around, great, great, great. And then I got to around here and it was starting to be not very much white left. And then I got to here and I totally ran out. But then luckily I had just a plain white sock base um, from another pair of socks, which I'll show you after this. But I had that lying around. And so I used that to just finish the edge. So you can't even tell, so you can see here, it's where I joined it. So you can kind of see, it is a lighter white there. That's a bit more, slightly darker off white, but the main thing is the gauge difference. So the yarn that I used for this, uh, I haven't talked about it in ages, actually. The yarn for this is a fingering weight. It's 100% lamb's wool, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's by Studio Donegal, and it's a very toothy, uh, toothy fingering weight yarn. Whereas the one that I used to just finish the edge off, that white ball that I just picked up, that one is the Rowan Cashmere Sock Yarn. So obviously very different composition. That's a mix of Superfine Merino, Cashmere obviously, and uh, Nylon. But it's a much, even though they're both fingering weight, the Rowan Sock Yarn is definitely a, um, a slimmer yarn, as you can see by where the join is. But there we go, after all that time, there is my moody fairy. It's kind of got a butterfly feel to it. It feels like I should put um, some wrist straps to it and be one of those like girls at a festival that has like the fairy wings or whatever. It feels like that. There's something butterfly festival girl Egyptian, you know, just for those really specific fashion moments that you need, this has got you covered. There is my first shawl done and dusted. I definitely, I think I can see how people would get addicted to knitting shawls. I like playing around with the texture of it and the different patterns. And I think it's really fun also to play with color because maybe I would, I would maybe wear a sweater with this color, but there's other crazy ones that you could do. Um, actually speaking of sweaters with this color, that's something else I'm gonna talk about. This has been a segue for quite a few topics we're gonna talk about today, but yeah, I think being able to play around with textures and experiment with different stitch patterns is really great. However, this one, and now this is nothing wrong with the pattern. This is just my personal preference. And now I've learned that from knitting a shawl, I can look for that in future patterns. Is for me, I think this wingspan is just a little too long. Um, and the sort of, uh, what would you call this? The length here is maybe a bit shorter. I think ideally for me, I would like my shawl to be longer here and a little bit narrower in the width. But um, I'll knit another one and see if that's actually, would be my preference. But speaking of that, so the next shawl that I have on the list to do is the Stephen West Shawlography Shawl. So as I mentioned, my mum came down to visit Sydney and she is so lovely and she watches these videos and she heard me talk about the Stephen West shawl, shawlography. And because she's a woman with exceptional taste, she fell in love with it as well. And she asked me if I could knit her one and she was happy to purchase the yarn and I would make it for her. And so that's the next shawl I've got on my list to make. And I'll make her, her version first, obviously. And I think, you know, if it is something that I like the shape of, then I'll make one for myself too. But that is my finished object, my first finished object for this episode. I'm just really proud to have, have this off the needle. I've never had anything with a stitch count that, that big. 700 kind of blows my mind. Obviously, I know it's probably the same amount of stitches that I would have in a sweater, you know, for a large sweater, but there's just something about seeing a piece of like a garment stretched out like this that is just mind blowing that 
I put every single stitch into that. <laughs> so there we go. That's my moody fairy. Now, my next finished object is something that I haven't even shown on this channel before. So to explain why, I have quite a few very supportive friends and family that watch this and it means so much to me. It's just so sweet to hear even people I haven't asked to watch this. Like some of my boyfriend's family have watched it and family friends and stuff like that. And it's super, super sweet. The only downside of it is that if I want to make a gift for someone as a surprise and they watch this show, I can't talk about it. And that was the case of these. I have been knitting these socks for my boyfriend. So I took inspiration from the design. Um, I think it's called the Kitty Cat Socks, something like that. The name of the designer is completely going from my head. I will put a image and all the details in here, which speaking of that, if there's anything I talk about, whether it's yarn, designs, designers, anything like that, everything is linked below. So if there's any questions you have about anything related to that, I, I will have linked it below. If there's something I haven't, please let me know and I'll be happy to, to direct you to, to that. So these socks were based off that designer and it's got a, Oh, that's so funny. If you just heard that meow, that's who these socks are based off. So uh, we have two rag dolls, a brother and a sister, and the boy is called Appa and the girl is called Kiki. So we had to have an interlude because somebody was very upset that I had left her outside the door. Like locked her out just because her and her brother sometimes get in a bit of a chaotic mood and they want to destroy everything. And it's not the most easy when I'm trying to film. But funnily enough, what I was going to talk about was that um, the socks that I made were based on uh, one of our ragdolls. And I don't want to say that they've taken favorites, but they have. And, uh, <laughs> and Appa adores, adores my boyfriend. Like he thinks he is, oh, he's scratching right now to come in. Maybe right there. So just if you can see the comparison. So these socks are based on Upper. Oh, he's done. <laughs> all right, it's all been a bit chaotic um, with the cats coming in and it's just, I don't know what I was saying, but essentially um, these are based off a pattern by a, I believe she's Lithuanian, perhaps Norwegian finish. Anyway, the pattern's kind of heavily inspired by it, but I've changed the face to match Upper's face. That took forever. I tried to commission someone on Etsy who was a pixel artist if she could create the portrait and she was sort of like, oh, I don't know, that's not really my expertise. She sort of more did those like stick figure kind of pixel things or simplified pixels rather than like a portrait like this. So I took it upon myself to do it and I'm really happy with the outcome. I mean, these have been worn, so he is a bit stretched out. He should be little slimmer. What to say about them? I've just stopped showing them. I keep wanting to show it to the camera and then it's making me forget what I want to say. With these, the first one I did was this one here because you probably may notice that the feet are two different colors. The reason for that was I bought a, I bought two yarns to make this and I thought that would be enough to make a pair of socks. So I bought one ball of the Zalana Cosy in the bubblegum colorway, which is what I used to finish off the set of style sweater for my father, which I talked about in the previous episode. That's why I had that yarn. And then the other one I used was that Rowan cashmere sock yarn. And I thought between the two of them, that would be enough to give me two pairs of socks or a pair of socks rather. And it was not, it was plenty with the Rowan. That was fine. It was the Zalana Cosy. I got to about here and I realized I'm not gonna have enough of the blue to do two socks with it. So I thought maybe if I do a predominantly white color work along the foot, that will leave me enough to do the same with this. But then I got to on my second sock, I think around about here, or maybe it was up, even higher up, maybe it was up near his head and I totally just ran out. And I sort of thought, oh, it's fine. I'll just go back to the store that I bought it from but I went there and they'd sold out and I started looking online and it was sold out everywhere. And so I started freaking out because I thought I don't want to try and have to color match it because I don't want there to be a really obvious line or what am I going to do? Thankfully, a really small independent store, um, 
I think it was just like run out of someone's home. She had um, one last one spare. So I was able to get that to finish them. But then I kind of tossed up because I wasn't sure how much if I, if I loved this. But then I kind of thought, well, maybe they, sh they really should match. And I had a lot of toing and froing, and I spoke to a friend about it. I spoke to my dad about it and tried to get different inputs. And then ultimately I decided, who cares if they don't match? Let's just try one where the navy is the main color and then one where the white's the main color. So that's why the feet aren't the aren't perfectly matchy-matchy. But that is my other finished object. And the reason I obviously had to keep it secret was because it was for a birthday present, but that birthday's now passed and they've actually been getting lots and lots of wear. So you can't really ask for more than that. So then following on from that pair of socks, speaking of works in progress, I've got another pair of socks that I'm working on. So I've got a hoe here and oh my God, it is so skinny. <laughs> so this I've made with the wool that I spoke about in a previous episode, but this is made from the yarn that's spun from an 80-20 blend of dog wool and merino. Wait, no, it's an 80-20 blend of the dog fur and wool. So it's not the softest, but it is super, super insulating. So the dogs that it's made from are called Ochaka. They're like a Caucasian mountain dog from the Caucasus. <laughs> so their fur is super, super dense and they have to survive in really harsh climates. So I thought what's gonna make better bed socks than some really sturdy, fluffy dog. So I've got one done there. I was actually surprised how soft this feels on because it is a pretty scratchy yarn. I wouldn't say that this is buttery soft by any means whatsoever. But once I put it on my foot, it was super toasty and surprisingly soft, not itchy at all. And I'm only making these as bed socks. So because we've had a really bad cold snap in Sydney and my feet are getting really cold in bed, I have been using my boyfriend's like hiking socks but they are several sizes too big. And I feel like I've got kind of like elf shoes on where it sort of curls at the toe. So I just thought I'd make a pair for myself. And with that one, it is a, ooh, a one by one ribbed. And I did a tubular cast on for it. So it's got, you know, more stretch. And then just a two by two rib for the body. I did German short rows for the heel. Because I have quite a high arch, I really like short row heels. I feel like it sort of sucks up and really hugs the heel really well on the foot. When I've done a heel flap and gusset, I feel like I always have too much fabric left at my arch and it's kind of just, I don't know, not an ideal fit. If this is really cutty, apologies. It's just because I have to keep getting up to wrangle the cats from like not eating yarn. I've got like all my things just spread out over here and um, it's a lot more than normal, so they're getting really excited with all the different options that they can destroy. So I started the second sock for it here, um, just on two millimeter needles. They're a nine inch circular by Addy. I, on the whole, prefer nine inch circulars. I know some people hate them, other people love them. I find at the start, they really strain my hands. I find right here on my thumb gets really, really, tight and sore really quickly. And I think it's because, you know, when you have a longer needle, you can rest it along your palm here for added stability. But with these, obviously you can't. So I feel like you're pressing really hard to hold it and it strains this muscle here. So I find for the first, till pretty much till I finish the cuff, I find my hands get sore quite quickly with it. Yeah, I just find it much easier for socks. I've got nothing against Magic Loop. I just much prefer the ease of just going around and around the round and not having to worry about moving my needles about. And this, I've got heaps of this wool. I think I've probably got, the rest is all hanked up, but I've got so much of this. So I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, because there's a lot. And it does, the listing for this does say it's fingering weight. Oh, I think it's a bit too thick to be fingering. I'd say it's much closer to a DK something like that. And so my very last work in progress is my stone crop cardigan by Andrea Mari. So I apologize about the strings hanging through, but there we go. I have finished the yoke section and I've separated for the sleeves. 
I'm knitting this on 2.75 millimeter Addies on a 60 centimeter circular. I am so happy with how this is coming along. It is so delightful. I'm now just at the stage where I just need to knit down to the body and then I think once I get to a certain length, I'll just do the ribbing. It's just gonna be straight knitting down and I'm tossing up whether I wanna add in a little bit of waist shaping. I'm not 100% sure. I think I will actually. Just underneath the armpit here, I think I'll probably add in some waist shaping. I don't know what my plan is yet. I haven't thought much far further ahead than that, but that's where it's at. And it is just, oh, all these different color changes with the spin cycle is just so beautiful and such, such a delight to work with. Something that really struck me about it is as beautiful and incredible spin cycle is, it's kind of hard to get past that price point, which is why I really love the stone crop because at least for my size, I'm pretty much gonna be able to get away with just a single skein. In Australia, they go for around about 50 Australian dollars. I'm sure the pricing's probably pretty similar in other countries. So when I see projects that use huge amounts of it or only spin cycles, so for instance, like Andrea Murray's Shifty, it just kind of blows my mind about how much people must be spending on their projects. Like knitting's not a cheap, hobby by any means, but if you were knitting a larger size in the shifty, I mean, how many skeins would you need? Eight, 10, 12? Let's say 10 for an easy number. It's $50 each, that's $500. Whew, I mean, that's, uh, that's incredible. Just to spend that amount of money on a project. I would be terrified to wear it. <laughs> It'd be like, everyone has to keep a one meter distance from me at all times. You know, I have to oh, just like be in a bubble suit just to keep people away from any kind of damage. Cause oh my God, can you imagine if you were out and someone like was smoking and their ash fell on it or if somebody tripped and spilt their red wine on you. So that's pretty much all the good stuff I have to catch you up with. And I, once again, I apologize for kind of how inconsistent I have been with uploading. So thank you for stopping by and for anyone who leaves a comment, you are so sweet. Thank you so much. I will chat to you soon. Take care and see you next week. Bye.